John Anderson knows a thing or 10 about winning a Big Ten tournament title. He joins us now to talk about it. Coach, before we dive into the interview, we have to ask you about that nice little Gatorade bath you got at the end there. How would you rank that one of all the titles you've been a part of? Well, that was a good one because it was 112 <laughs> degrees or so on the field, so I needed to be cooled off, so it felt pretty good. All right. Well, bring us back into the action on Sunday. What stood out about this one? You've been a part of now 10 of these conference tournament titles. What stood out about this victory? Well, I think the way we played over four games. I thought we played at a fairly high level uh, for four games, you know, on the bigger stage. Um, and I, I think uh, in the current uh, era of Big Ten baseball over my long career, the league right now, in my opinion, is, is as strong as ever. So I think to win the regular season title and then to go through and win the conference tournament against a very, very strong field, I, I think is very rewarding. I think it speaks to the talent level of our team and how well they were able to manage their experience and their emotions and, and play at a consistent high level. It's also the 10th year your team has earned 40 or more wins. And with that 10th conference tournament title, how have you been able to sustain such a high level of coaching success through decades of changes? Well, I think first and foremost, you got to get good players. I mean, you got to get the right people in your program. They have to be have to have, have some talent, obviously. And and I think the one thing that we've been pretty consistent at over my career, anyway, is we do a really good job in player development. And uh, I think you have to in this part of the country. We don't get all the high high school drafts uh, like California or Texas or Florida might get. And so we have to find good athletes, the kids that want to be here, and. We have to do a really good job in the player development system. And my assistant of 33 years, Rob Fornasier, has headed up our player development system and has done a tremendous job of, of navigating us uh, through all these years and making sure we can develop a team that can compete for a championship. Yeah, you've been a part of that player development since being not only a part of the team in the 70s, but you, you've been there coaching since 79 and, and beyond uh, as a grad assistant initially. So how do you create that buy-in as the different generations continue to come through and continue to connect with a different caliber of, of kid? Well, there's no question. The, the generations over the, over the, the long span of, of 40, almost 40 years, the kids do change, uh, no question. Uh, the generations changed, so we're into the uh, cell phone area and, uh, era and social media area and all the noise that the kids are connected to. I think that brings on a whole nother challenge in coaching of trying to help them deal with some of those distractions and, and, and not getting caught up in what everybody else wants them to do and all the expectations everybody else has for them. But I think I learned from Dick Siebert, who was the longtime coach at Minnesota, that I had a great opportunity to learn under. He, uh, he won three national championships, and he was a stickler for being able to execute the fundamentals of the game. Be a good teacher. Make sure your kids can execute the fundamentals in offense and defense and base running. Be able to play catch on defense, throw strikes, and, and, you'll, and if you have enough talent, you'll win your fair share. So I think we've stuck to that. That's where I learned it, and I think we've done a pretty good job of teaching the fundamentals over a long period of time. And another key to John Anderson teams has been your reliance upon the veteran players on your team. And this year you had a plethora of that coming back, but you also had two freshman players that have really turned heads this season on the pitching front. In your mind, when did you know that, that both Pat Fredrickson and Mac Myers were going to have the seasons that they had this year? Well, we knew when we recruited them and what we saw in the fall and through winter workouts, we knew they had some talent. That was uh, that was uh, pretty obvious. That's why we recruited them. That's what we saw in practice. The big question always is for young players, especially freshmen, how are they going to react to uh, getting out there in Division One competition, uh, the different environments you play in, how they manage the game and their experience and control the game and deal with the running game and be able to pitch through a lineup. In high school, you might have two or three good hitters in the lineup and Division one baseball, you can have nine guys you got to pitch your way through, and and then how they handle adversity and failure, and when the umpire misses a close call and end up walking a guy, how do you how do you handle all those things, and can you refocus and get back to the next pitch? And and I think we saw early on in the season they were both calm, very poised, uh, handled uh, some of the things that you can't control out there very very well, and and as uh, as season, early season went along, uh, Patrick was not a starter until about the. Uh, fourth weekend of the season he became a starter we saw some things working him out of the bullpen that eventually convinced us that he was ready for that role 
And coach, uh, they will certainly be key assets as you look ahead to the NCAA tournament, your 32nd appearance for Minnesota baseball. But the first time that Minnesota baseball will play an NCAA tournament game at home since 2000, that's 18 years. What's the significance or the excitement level around your team right now to be able to host? Well, I think first and foremost, it speaks to the uh, strength of the Big Ten Conference and, and the teams that are in it. I think it's allowed us to be able to be uh, one of the top uh, 16 national seeds. And without a strong conference and without other outstanding teams in your conference, you, you can't achieve that. So I think the, the first and foremost, I think, is a representation of the league we play in and the other good teams and programs that are in it. And more importantly, I think if you study history, about 80 to 85 percent of the teams that advance to the College World Series play at home in the regionals and super regionals. So if you want to advance, the chance to play in front of your home fans and sleep in your own beds and, and be in an environment you're very comfortable in. Well, history has told us it, it, it can be uh, uh, a very strong indicator of what you can do. So we're, we're excited about playing at home. And this is my 19th regional as a head coach. I've coached a lot of road games and I'm looking forward to being at home and taking this special team and continuing our journey. Well, Coach, your legacy continues. May another Gatorade bath be in your future. We are excited for you as well. Thanks so much for the time today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle.